Good morning, Turtle Club. How's it going? It is I, Mag Synchro, with Convertible Turtle Gaming, and we are here to play some epic rag with Mag. That is our Ark Survival Evolved stream series where we're playing on the Ragnarok server, and we've got a couple things going on. Um, so, you know, just a couple teensy, weensy, itsy bitsy things. Uh, first and foremost, there's a new code for getting 20% off your first month server cost at arcservers.io, the awesome sponsors for this particular server. That is arcservers.io, guys. And if you go there, uh, you'll notice, bam, right there's the sponsor uh, logo in the upper left-hand corner of this video. Um, Vikings2021 is the code you can use, V-I-K-I-N-G-S-2021. The reason why is because Valheim, a much, much requested service from their company, uh, has been developed for their back end. It's a very lightweight program. Uh, servers for it seem to be... Well, let me just say it this way, guys. As far as Valheim goes, there is... There's a lot of room to grow. That's the best way I can say it. I've looked at a couple things, talked to a couple people, and the way their game is built, the way their server code is built, is, you know, it's in beta, so keep that in mind, but it appears that their dedicated server code is actually a client program that has removed a lot of the graphical requirements, and that's all it is. Now, normally, doing that for a server um, is less than ideal. Uh, basically, what it equates to, what it amounts to, is you're pretty much just having a another person play the game, um, and it doesn't have any kind of actor in a sense they did a couple of things to kind of modify it to where I have the best way to say it there's there, the tethering problem is not there so uh, so the good news is uh, servers for Valheim you could actually run them on a Raspberry Pi 4 uh, 4 gig model actually I believe it's what the, the specs boil out to there's been a few people that have done it with 4s uh, the 8 gig is preferred, so if you really want a Valheim server and you want to just own one to play around with, you can get one for like a hundred bucks. But that is you managing everything, doing everything on your end, and keeping the internet connection going, and all that wonderful stuff. Uh, T.max FPS 60, that sets the FPS to where it caps at 60, uh, gamma 3. That command is going to make it to where you guys are going to be able to see where I am and what I'm doing. Um, so, and you guys can see as this game loads in, the graphics and the graphics card they start they start fighting with each other for a little bit, and eventually the the graphics card wins. Arc looks beautiful once you start playing it for a little bit, but it takes it boy howdy it takes this computer a little bit. Um, so a few things uh, about. Valheim that I've noticed is it's got some really cool stuff. It's not family friendly, so unfortunately we're not going to be playing it on this channel. I really uh, think it looks cool. I've, I've been watching a few other people play it. That's kind of how I get an idea of things are family friendly. Man, I haven't touched Ark in a very, very um, long time. Um, when the internet was bad last week, I just kind of didn't get into it. and It sort of didn't get touched at all over here either. Um... So there's a few things that we want to do. Hey, Sally, good morning. Good morning. Let's go ahead and drop these things over in this area. So our goal for today is we're going to go exploring the volcano a little bit. I I am concerned about the volcano just as much as we were concerned. McAdoo, hey, how's it going? Much, much as we were concerned about the, the murder snow episode that we last did. And so... We want to. Oh, well, we we don't have enough narcotic for train darts, but we can get some arrows. Okay. Let's uh, do this, and let's get us a. Is that an ascendant crossbow that we have? Yes, it is. Let's go ahead and grab that too. All right, all right. Let's see what else we got here. I've been playing Elder Scrolls Online. Is one of the reasons why I have not been playing this anywhere near as often 
as I probably should as of late. It's one of the reasons why we do have the settings on the server as casual as they are though is primarily for you know real people like like everybody on the channel uh, we we tend to get wrapped up with some things you know like I, I know um, not to call anybody out but because McAdoo's here she makes a real good example I know there's a number of games other than Ark that McAdoo enjoys playing and I too am in a very similar area so occasionally Oh, that had only one in it. That's never good when it only has one. So occasionally we need Kalyan soup. Uh, we, you know, we bounce around. We go play other things. Actually, was there prime jerky in here? Cooked meat, cooked meat, and that's all there is. Okay. Ideally, we want prime meat to train same things, but you know, we'll take what we get sometimes. Alright, those are all seeds. Uh, let's see here. There is Pinky, which means our other Argent is out and about. These are fully charged. We're going to grab a. We're not going to grab that one. We don't want to die with that on our body if we can avoid it. We're going to grab a few of these. Boy, howdy. Um. That's a gotcha that's suspiciously producing a lot more than I think it should be. So where is Charles is over there? Charles is making some, some crystals. There's only so much time in the day. You can only Oh, I know, I know, right? It's it's like that meme picture where it's like, man, I can't I, I don't have enough time to game. And the person looks at the shelf, right? And there's like work and food and, and sleep and they pull that sleep box out and they're like where can I I have been the guy with the sleep box pulled out way more times than I should and it leads to some funny things um, you know that's Digrat and I both are guilty of that like I know Digrat I usually goes to bed at a pretty reasonable hour but as I mentioned we've been playing Elder Scrolls online it's free to play. It does cost a little bit to get going, depending upon where you acquire a copy. If it's disc copy or digital copy, the prices can vary. Um, but, but um, she was just playing up till like three hours ago. Turtle Club. She's 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 got some characters that she really enjoys. She's been having fun with it. Anytime, you know, anytime my wife finds a game that she likes to play for now, um, I, I let her lean wholeheartedly into it. And so, because there's not enough hours in the day, though, you know, we wind up having to put other things aside. So, I gotta ask myself, if I was a mag synchro and I was putting trank darts away rather quickly, where would they go? They'd go in here. Awesome. That's what I was hoping. Okay, we got those... Just in case we got those, we got some meat, we got some cooked prime meat, we got some narcos, we got some Kalian soup. The last thing we need is some silk and some desert. Hey, we have some desert gears. Awesome, awesome. But yeah, the, the game is fun. I, I, I've been enjoying it. Boy, howdy, right now. This is, I, I can't even, I can't even turtle club. This is how lazy some of these other mods have made me. I want my button for S plus right here so I can like click and just grab all these things instead of having, and this is bad, right? Look at this, turtle club, I ain't kidding, look at this. I turn here, I hit this button, and then I type in hide, and I grab the hide. I type in crystal, and I grab the crystal, and then I move back here, and I put this in. Look how that, that's ridiculous, right? That I, I I'm not the only one who's who's thinking that. I I hope. Um, you get spoiled rotten on some of these mods, though. You really do. You really do. But yeah, we've been playing a lot of Elder Scrolls Online. Uh, we've gone through the beginning with a couple of characters. We're kind of finding our groove, finally. And that's a big deal when you're playing an MMO. 
you got to find the character type and character style that you enjoy. Otherwise, you you pretty much just wind up not having a good time. And game style and what the lore of a game wants you to do, two very different things. I did not want to eat that, but eat it I did. Desert, 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 desert. Cool. All right. You miss us plus. I too miss us plus. Uh, you know there there are a number of players who do play on the server. Um, worldwide, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. There's like six time zones playing on our server worldwide. Oh, hold up, hold up. Oh, Chantel, you're not eating from the, you're not eating from the food trough. Come on, over this way. Chantel, you need to come over this way. Come on, come on. Come on, all right, that, that's good. Now you just stay there. Look like you're happy. Okay, you're happy, good. But yeah, I get that. I definitely get that. Like, my my playtime is sporadic now. Like, when I jump on the server, if I'm not streaming, I, I'm like, I'll wake up, I'll get on for a few minutes, I'll look around for a few things, try to prep the server stream. But the internet has been so just awful. Like, I hate how bad it's been here. And... The, the internet company keeps saying that they're working on it and that they're they're aware of some problems in the area and I think what it really boils down to as much as I hate to say it is in the Atlanta metro especially right now the job markets oh okay we're doing good on, on that the job market is still not the best like there's a lot of places around here that when COVID happened, when it first occurred, a lot of companies around here found out just how, what's the best word to say? Frivolous, what they offered was. And you know, that that's horrible if you think about it, right? It, let's say you, you have a job and you're looking for some kind of personal satisfaction, some sort of personal rewarding thing for going in and working every day and then coming home and doing it all over again. I mean, let's let's be honest, let's be reasonable. As people work for, at first, when you go to a job, when you're first getting a career, a job, um, you're only doing it for a paycheck. I mean, straight up, the first job I ever worked, I flipped burgers, I fried fries. Um, it's one of those jobs that requires very little experience. Uh, most kids and adults have cooked food at some point in their life and so they think not a hundred percent correctly mind you um, they think that they can go in and anybody can cook a burger and I had that thought right I had that thought process that I can go in and cook a burger because I mean the way the food industry is put down um, just everybody thinks it's, it's just an easy job. And it's not. There's a lot of things that a food restaurant does that at home you don't think about. And I'm, I'm derailing myself as we fly to the volcano here on this topic. But I, I've, you know, I feel, I feel impressed upon myself, I guess, to kind of talk about it while I wait for my stamina to go up here. Um, so, yeah, not everybody can cook a burger, not everybody can fry fries, not everybody can remember the buttons or juggle the, the orders in a restaurant in their head. There are a number of things that make the food industry difficult. Uh, putting up with people and the grief that they give you is there. But I remember, so when we first started, I was, and Ark has been crashing for everyone. Uh, yeah, Ark's been really hateful for a lot of people. Um, I'm not 100% sure we're going to get away with having a, a, a crash-free stream today. But I'm I'm up to try it, so... I'm up to try it. 
but I remember, uh, you know, when I first started, I worked for Sonic Drive-In. And those that aren't in the United States that don't know what Sonic Drive-In is, it is a eating establishment that's your typical burger joint. They do french fries, they do handmade onion rings, which is not as cool as it sounds, so trust me on that. Um, burgers, deep fried foods that are breaded, uh, you know, standard fast food, greasy spoon kind of stuff, but it's a drive-in, which means instead of going inside, sitting down, taking up table space, they have all these stalls around the actual eatery where people deliver your food to your car. Um, so I start there, and I'm like, big kind of chip on my shoulder, right? Thinking, man, I'm, I'm coming in here, and this is a job that anybody can do. And I get started off making burgers. And when I say that, it means I stand in front of a grill, and when somebody asks for a hamburger, I take the meat patty out of the fridge, and I put it on the grill, and I let it cook for two minutes on one side. I flip it. I let it cook for two minutes on the other side. If it needs to be uh, well done, I flip it one more time and let it cook for two more minutes. Uh, six minutes to, to cook that burger. And, and then, and this is the weirdest thing that I ever thought, then I put it off the grill onto a waiting hamburger bun that the person on the actual burger station for the buns and everything sits on. And the way the progression worked in this drive-in, and the way it works at a lot of restaurants, from what I've discovered from discussing with other people, is that you kind of get promoted to other places once you prove that you are smart enough to do your job. You wouldn't think that would be a, a big thing with you know cooking just the burger patty. And it, it really, not to take away from anybody, but as long as you realize that a pink burger is a raw burger and a slightly gray burger, you've experienced that. Restaurant here in Nova Scotia used to do that. See? And that's that's the way they do that. Now, so I upgraded, right? So, so I proved that I knew that two minutes was, you know, a unit of time and that two more minutes was another unit of time. And then you have to prove that, you know, to put cheese on the, the burger so it melts. And then you got um, grilled chicken and all these other little things that wind up being, you know, special to the grill. And once you handle all that, then you get moved over from the grill to where all the condiments get put on. Now, let me tell you, on the grill, it's pretty straightforward. If you've cooked a hamburger in your home or you have reheated the chicken breast in, in a skillet in your house or you've ever fried up some onion inside your home or fried bacon I mean all these things that I was personally doing since I was like 10 or 11 years old then the burger side uh, the meat side of cooking and making a burger in a restaurant is like one of those um, is this really a complicated thing situations um, now where things get tricky though and where I got humbled uh, was when I got promoted to the topping station. And the first thing I did, the first burger I made, I ruined. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I make a burger in my home, I like to pile on the toppings, right? I like to, uh, Dig Rat has said, frost my hamburger bun with mayonnaise. Um, it's not quite that bad, but I do like enough visible layer of mayo on a, on a sandwich or a burger to where I don't see the bread. And it's because I like that texture, I like that creaminess, I you know, that sauciness of it there. And so, like every other arrogant teenage kid, I presumed that the way I liked my burger was the way the restaurant wanted me to make the burger because I was told to dress the burger. And so the first thing I did was, you know, put the mayonnaise on this thing the way I wanted to. And my, the manager, the guy in charge, the, uh, I believe he was actually the owner. He comes up to me and goes, Mag, um, what are you doing? I said, I'm making a burger. And he said, no, Mag, that's not the way you make a burger. And he proceeds to scrape off most of the mayonnaise I've put on this thing. 
and and I proceeded to be dressed down at that moment. And at that moment, I went from going, I'm going to be a, a great chef in a restaurant to this is not what I want to do in life. Now, you know, there, there's a bit of that, right? So when we had COVID hit, a lot of the companies that actually did well when COVID first started around Atlanta was the restaurant business. People, people went from like packing lunch and taking it with them to work or packing, um, you know, a time slot to get food out and about to being at home a lot. Those of us that had jobs that allowed us to work from home found ourselves in a very weird location where our whole entire, and I mean our whole entire routine was just fully disrupted. So what occurred is in this area, this job market, a lot of these fast food places started booming. And a lot of places started finding out that no one really wanted to deal with all that from a career standpoint. So we got to this weird spot that these people started really realizing that, um, especially as everything locked down, you had work, you had home, and you had very little in between. And as that occurred, and as all these jobs kind of pushed forward, um, they realized that they really needed... Um, I don't even recognize this little scar here. Where am I at on this map? Interesting. I love how I've been playing on Ragnarok forever, and I'm still finding places that just don't ring any bells for me. Oh, that was that was some sort of stompy stompy. What's the stompy stompy I found? Uh, it's a Rex, right? Is it a Rex? Come on, roar at me. Maybe not. Yeah, that's a Rex. Okay. Hey, Slacky Moo, how's it going? But yeah, so what's been going on with the internet ties into that. Because as more and more people have discovered that what they're getting out of their job isn't... Uh, what they need out of their job is more than a paycheck to a point. And while the job market is becoming very, very saturated with people looking for jobs... Uh, what we've wound up with is these people that have either not made it uh, a good choice or whatever they're doing, and so they've quit, thinking like they normally do, I can just get a job anywhere, and they find out that's not the case. So what we have now in, um, and for example, the neighborhood I live in, it's right off of two very busy highways. Um, if you're trying to get anywhere in the southeastern United States, you will pass by the exit that takes you to where I live. Um, so we have where we normally would say we have hundreds of people on the internet around here. We have thousands of people. I mean, it's 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 ridiculous. The number of people that have lights on in their homes during the day, that cars are around these buildings during the day, is just insane. And a lot of companies have just started finding out that working from home is really good I mean think about it you know when I am here at the turtle club and in the turtle cave as we call it at, while I'm here and I'm working and I'm doing my job and I am watching Netflix in the background while I churn through my tasks while I am talking to people Volcano 2 you're right I saw that but I also saw the drop in front of me so I'm, I'm bombing down into that um so while uh, you know while all that's going on, while I'm paying for all those things that come with that, hey, there's some jerky. Um, what the company's not doing is they're not paying for all that. They are not paying for any of that. Um, and so since they're not paying for any of that, since they're not required to pay for the electricity, the bandwidth, um, what they wind up with is they, they get employees that, since they're in a more um, laid-back kind of environment, they produce better, and they're saving a lot of money. So a lot of companies that find out their employees can, in fact, work from home are having their employees work from home. And the end result is any time of day that would be considered a day moment where several people are on the Internet, 
there's several hundred people on the internet instead. And that's what we'll be dealing with with the with the connection issues. And I'm hoping, and I'm hoping the reason why there's been a lot of internet problems with the internet going down for several hours um, throughout the course of the week, it's usually like half an hour to an hour some days, is because Comcast is fixing their infrastructure to support that higher level demand. Because they really need to do that. They really need to do that. All right, so first off, what we're wanting to do is kind of show off what we got going on at the volcano. And a few things we can do here. That's a female Rex. We don't want to tame her at the moment. But it is on our, our to-do list, possibly, to tame a Rex, if not two Rexes or four Rexes or five, eventually. But there are a number of dinos that we really kind of want to take a look and see if we can find over here. Because this server's been available for quite some time now. And so I feel like I can start showing off a lot of the discovery that people may or may not be aware of. So we're hot right now. And we're going to eat us some soup to kill us off. Because that's what Kaelin soup does. Alright, so... I think that actually might be one of the things right away. So first off, as you guys are already aware, anywhere that there's a dinosaur on this on this server, where we we're able to do it, there's an aberrant variant. So if there's an aberration dinosaur anywhere that there's potentially there, there's there's that. Uh, so there's an aberrant dung beetle. And that goes for everything. So if there's like aberrant titan boas, they could be over here. Oh come on, we're gonna we're gonna boop some snoot here. Once you realize how non-scary titan boas really are, they become pretty good for getting meat. And on our server, occasionally, they're good for some other stuff. Alright, let's see here. Looks like we didn't get any special drops off of them. Alright, that's alright. can't be stung by that often and we really can't fight these as well as we'd like that's fine we didn't have as big of a problem with that as we thought we would all right so what do we got here we have carnotauruses Which are legit more terrifying than what they had been in the past. What do we got here? Hello. Hi. Oh, there we go. There's a there is a male axe Allosaurus. So the X variations on Ark. When they first came out, they were, you know, pretty cool. Everybody was really gaga about them. They thought that these were really insane. And I, I gotta admit that there is some, there is some, um, there is some clout to that. Aloes are still very dangerous. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, let's see if we can't maybe get this aloe or it's not as dangerous for us. I would love to get an Exalosaurus in this uh, little kind of travel around. There I go hitting the alt button again. In Elder Scrolls Online, the alt button 
is used for a lot of stuff. All right. Maybe, just maybe. Wow, that thing just decided it didn't want to fight us? Oh wow, okay. I don't know if this is a good dismount spot or not. Oh my gosh. Looks like it should be. And it doesn't look like anything's gonna be able to really get to me. But I can't say. They oh oh yeah, they really do look cool. Um The X variants look really awesome. Um, they don't do anything special though, which is well. Let me take that back. They do do one thing special. They have they do ten percent more melee and ten percent less hit points. So at the end of the day, the X variants. Um, man, there's just a really bad hitbox here. All right, Allo. We we want you to come home with us, possibly, but not at the risk of like dying if we can help it. <laughs> ah, he he moved just at the right time. Alright, objects in the mirror are closer than they appear, so that's not going to work. Hi, just how tall a boy are you? You're that tall, okay. Well, you might not be... I don't recognize this hole. That may or may not be a good thing. Okay, that's cave noises. Anytime you hear cave noises in art, you need to go away. Because that means you've got some sort of dungeon inside there to fight. And we really don't want to fight a dungeon. Alright. Alright, so... We got rain... We got a very, very, very angry aloe. And we have a very, very poor line of sight on it. Okay. Maybe we can go here. Anybody over here? Oh, the aloe's here. All right, the aloe is here, and the aloe. The aloe has tasted argent flesh, and it wants more argy. All right. They do look very cool, though. They do look very cool, and it, it kind of disappoints me. Um, there's so many things that they could have done with all these X variations, other than make them look like they belong in the in the setting. And make them lens flare. That's absolutely what this aloe is doing right now is lens flaring. Look at him. Look at him. He's not sure if he wants to try to eat me. I think it's a he. Right, it's a little 40 he. Yeah. Hmm. 
It could lead to the wyverns. Oh, yeah. We, we definitely don't want to find the wyverns by accident. Really? Alright. Well, we know we have a pretty cranked up setting on how much torpor it takes to down a dino. And I know Alice take a ridiculous amount. I think we're just gonna have to write him off as just not our not our not our uh, not our price today. Would have loved to have had it, but it just wasn't in the cards at the moment. We probably could spend about 15, 20 minutes crafting some stuff to sort of trap them and be like that. But, you know, there, there's more to life than just that, right? Like right here, we have an aberrant Scorpius, right? And that is a raptor that we are hearing. So we'll fly all the way up here for a second. Oh, here's one another one of the X variants. Right there. Ankle Saurus. So they you know, they don't do anything particularly special. And what I mean by that is again it's just a stat change. They they have less hit points, they hit harder. Oh, T Mag flashing that super chat signal. What? What? Is that What's going on there? Those are Whoa guys. That's so funny. Um Those are from forever ago. Wow. Wow. Um, interesting. And those are set up. Oh, we need to have full screen going. Let's get full screen go back. All right, here we go. Um, but yeah, it's uh. All right, so here is. Excuse me, sir. Those are some some dinosaurs that are that are having to second guess what happened in their life because they just got picked up and thrown off in the volcano. There's a number over here. Oh, look at that. couple other things trying to kill us. Man. Lots of things wanting to kill us over here in the volcano area. And I know, look, if we go down here, look at this. Look at this, guys. I know one of these is probably a golem, maybe. No, no rock golem there. Alright. So that's probably sulfur, then. Once it gets a little bit more light out, we'll be able to kind of patrol around a little bit. It's the gamma correction, just so you guys are aware. I'm able to filter this through the Elgato. And so the Elgato actually has it set to where the gamma is a little lighter on the screen. Because I usually like my screens a little bit darker. And so what you guys can see gamma-wise is actually an overcorrection from what I'm seeing. So if I had a torch, which I may or may not, I don't remember if I was smart enough to grab one of those. Um, flint, stone, and wood. I don't think we have any of that at all. Excuse me, sir. You are a passive tame. You are not on the uh, agenda today. We will eat you until you drop polymer, though, if that's what it takes. Alright. 
So now we're starting to get some light again. All right, so now we can kind of explore a bit. I do know we're getting dangerously close to the wyverns because you start to see the pylon over there once we get close to the wyverns. I know there are other dinos. Oh, these right here are probably the most dangerous thing in the volcano. Make no mistake, guys, a lot of these dinos in here are, are deadly. I mean, by a lot, I mean like all of them. If you don't have a very good mount to kind of parade around here like I do at the moment, and you don't have a, I don't know, I guess if you had a lot more calmer ability to maintain than I did, you could, you'd be really good on whatever mount you wanted to be. But that should be a non aberrant one, right? Oh, that's another aberrant. Interesting. But there's just danger lurking around every single like crevice around here. And I've seen some people go around this place with um, insanity. Um, is this another hole in the cave? Okay, I, I gotta fly through this to see exactly where it takes us. No guts, no galaxy, right guys? Huh. Well, how about that? How about that? Oh, look at this. Speaking of dangerous Atherpleuras. It took out that Allosaur. It said he didn't need to be alive anymore. But, you know, I've seen some people just kind of go around and give zero care. You know, these things would be a lot cooler if they had the web shooting ability that the uh... oh that's an atherpleura no 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 we are we are winged a little bit we're gonna fly out of there um you know buddy your melee damage your stamina is real top notch I think we want 10k for hit points before we go anywhere else so there are a number of other dinosaurs that have been added to this horrible inhospitable area. It's just a matter of us finding them. And I gotta tell you, Tover Club, one of the things that I've discovered is just horrendous to try to do when your internet is just being spotty is anything involving non-crafting in this game like crafting's fine occasionally your lag will cause some really weird things like you'll use your materials and not get anything and occasionally the opposite will happen all right here's a here's a rock them here we go here we go total club there's another one of the the wild X rock elemental. And there's another rock elemental right over here. Let's see if that's another X. Oh, that's a regular. That's a regular. So you can see the the especially with the the rock elementals because they tend to be very prominent. Those um, spawns are an either or thing. One of these days we're going to have to 
tame one of those on camera. I never realized there's a whole lot of crystal around here. You know, if you can get around the whole entire everything's trying to kill you spot. Including, what's this? Are we in murder snow? We're, we're, we're tippy top. And then we go in here. Where is this? Snowy cherub lake. Wow. Once you can get past the everything's trying to kill you spot that this, this area is though. There's just a lot of cool stuff. I mean, there really is. But not the coolest thing ever yet. Gonna have to possibly go down to the beach area, maybe. For what some of this wild, crazy volcanic stuff is. So the volcano, it pretty much, if you're wanting to know where the volcano zone is, as far as arc's concerned, primarily, it's anywhere you see that the ground is this volcanic ground. Now there are some segmentations in the volcano for for Ragnarok. Um, so where the grass is, it, in some spots, is still considered volcano. And where the, the ash is in some spots is considered not the volcano. Hey, there's a there's a Quetzal. Hey Quetzal. Level 50 Quetzal. Okay, cool. But if you start seeing things like parasaurs kind of roaming around free and, and not being, you know, ravaged by things, that's a pretty good indication that you're no longer at the volcano. That's a pteranodon. All right. So for the most part, like right here, we, we got these guys again. That's volcano. That might be overspill. So let's see. Oh, that looks like a giga. Nah, it's not a giga. That can't be a giga. Wild female rex, 90. It's not bad. Depending upon how the rest of this taming adventure goes today. Oh. That's a nice just passel of raptors. Let's see if we can cause them problems. Come on, battle chickens. Hello, battle chickens. Come on, follow me. Come on, battle chickens. Follow me further. Further. Hi, battle chickens. Keep following battle chickens. Alright, all you guys that are battle chickens. I don't know if you guys fight over resources, but hopefully you guys fight over resources. And all these Atherpleuras. Atherpleuras are kind of, kind of just really, really terrifying. Um, they're one of the few dinos that have a. They don't have an area of effect. What they have is a damage spike shield kind of thing going on. Alright, here's a Titan Boa. Well, that wasn't much of a Titan Boa at all. Alright, we might... Let's see how big this one is. A 270. This is going to be rough. 
If we get to about half hit points, we'll probably take off. So Atherpleuros have two very devastating attacks. Uh, number one is the fact that when you hit them, they actually hit you right away. Two is that. That Acid Spit is, is very vicious. But every time we hit the Atherpleura, we are actually taking damage. Walking by the Atherpleura, you take damage. The Acid Spit's a special attack. It also does more damage. Uh, Atherpleuras themselves also have a habit of damaging any structure. Looks like we're going to take this one out and, and survive. How about that? Did not suspect that was going to happen at that fight. Mechadu, what did you feed the sergeant? Thank you for whatever it was. Alright, well that was a 270. We took it out fairly good. That's a 50. 50 shouldn't be too much of a problem at all then. So what makes these things so deadly though, is even though they hit really hard, and I do mean that, and you see the most damage we're doing to ourselves, it's from ourself. Uh, the big thing is when they do damage to structures, they actually damage any kind of structure. It's just a drag body. You'll never tell. All right. Well, as long as it's a secret, just keep that trade secret. You'll be good. But yeah, after Pluris, if you ever find yourself in a situation on PvP, um, they actually will damage tech. Uh, they're one of the very few dinosaurs that can damage tech structures, and not many people know that, because Atherpleuras are pretty abysmal otherwise. But if you manage to get them into a, a base area that's tech encased or ensconced, or even metal for that damn matter, the, the damage um, will, will just be scary. For anyone who's not used to seeing their structures damaged by a swarm of Atherpleura. It's kind of like the uh, the silly Pegomastics idea. People, you know, once they get a couple of Pegomastics, they, they get more and more and more. And once you have a whole entire herd of them, you pretty much just go up to people and grief them. Alright, this looks like a good spot to try to fight one of these. Alright, it's also a low, lower leveled one. Okay, that's a Titan Boa that's fighting us. And an Atherpleura. We are in we are in we are in danger. Okay, we are in lots of danger. Let's just get away from there. Perch up here. So the volcano, you know, as you can tell, we, we had a pretty good situation for a second. We didn't have anything really around us. We landed and within the, about, I don't know, five seconds. We were being harassed by three different things. Oh, here's something that's around the volcano area. Feather lights. And if you'll notice, unfortunately, feather lights are on the menu for the praying mantises. Um, it's interesting how that happens. Alright, so praying manti around here. Don't believe. Oh, there's, there's kind of like the Wyvern boundary. As soon as you can see them, you've gone a little bit too far. Let's 
So we're gonna fly up this way and see what else we got. And I'm really hoping we can run into a couple really cool awesome things. Well, we've seen a couple actually. I mean, the X uh, Anklo, the X Carno, or Allo, I mean. Those are very, very awesome. Uh, the aberrant variations. all of this here come on guys there you guys go come on come on promise y'all I won't bite very much promise If you ever wanted, if you ever had a Carno type Dino, there's very little that will spawn on that side of the lava, and so just doing that is actually not a bad strategy. I say very little. That doesn't mean that nothing will, but just very little. You gotta be real mindful about how you move around here though. If I were to lose internet connection, this would be a very big problem. Because arc is arc, you want to be real careful about how close you decide the lava is. You definitely want to be pointing yourself up when you fly. Here's where the lava cools. Here, okay. Still trying to see some other cool stuff over here, though. Nah. We flew so fast by that Argent that that Argent didn't even know we were there. Now the one thing about our servers, we do have some of the rarity set to where you do have to wait for some deaths to happen before you can get some of the more rare stuff. So that's kind of why we've been killing some dinosaurs trying to cause the spawners to work a little. The wyvern didn't see me either. Um, no, that wyvern definitely didn't see me. We, we, got, we got a whole lot of this going on over here though. Look at this. We got an RG that's about to die. This volcano pool uh, will claim a lot of dinos before before it's all over. I wonder. I don't think I've ever. I don't know if this is smart or not, but. Okay. 
That looked like it was breakable almost with with the seam there. That's just a that's just a really bad texture, I guess. We're gonna stop messing with it so we don't wind up meshing through or something. I don't remember catching the eye of a wyvern, but you know. I'm I'm happy for that. Oh, look at this pretty pink colored Atherpora. Oh, it hit a little bit harder. And it's it's only biting for about twenty five. All right, and looks like we're safe to dismount. It's just drag body too. Okay. Could have sworn I saw something out of the corner of my eye down this way. guys. Well, I guess not. Okay. We are so much in Wyvern country at this point that it's, it's not exactly safe. But... We're going to fly just a little closer because we're just that less intelligent some days. Let's see what all's up around here. That's definitely where mommy and daddy wyverns live. Sometimes they're on vacation, sometimes they're definitely at the summer home, so we want to make sure they're not there. Everything looks alright there. Well, that's a bummer. That is a bummer. Alright, well. Sometimes we get lucky with some of the stuff at the volcano, sometimes we don't. We saw a couple really cool things. We're going to start heading to one of the other locations that we did some changes with on the server. And one thing to mention also, Turtle Club, is this volcano is active, so these lava flows, they will shift. They will indeed shift and become active. So you got to be mindful of that while you're exploring this because you'll, you'll get a bit of a warning. I do mean that, a bit of a warning, but not much. The volcano will become active and you will have a, uh, a mess on your hands. Hey, I look what just popped out of nowhere. A level 180 female Rex. Look at that spotting and everything. Pretty cool looking. Not really what we're here for today. And we know this cave is safe. So, if you were actually wanting to be stationed in the volcano, you could possibly build here. It's hot. But from point A all the way to point B, that might actually not be a horrible place to build. It may not. Look at that. It's just, we're not close enough to aggro it, I guess. 
Huh. Tour Club, we are still heading to find some stuff on this tour now. We, we were exploring the volcano and there are some definite cool things around the volcano. There are one, two, three, I want to say four X variants that are there uh, between the the Rexes, the Ankylos, the Aloes, and I think there's one other X variant, but I can't remember what they are. That they're all the fire ones. They do survive over there. Um, I did not know kangaroos were over here. I didn't do anything with kangaroo spawns. So Procoptodon's over here. That's kind of amazing. Alright, let's see here. So we're still course correcting this direction. Just about to the next place we want to go to. You will nice, uh, or saw one of the really big guys at the volcano, but I do not know exactly where. Um, there are a couple really big guys there, um, and I know what you're talking about. It's it's one of Amora's favorite dinos. I really wish I could have made them work on this map the way I wanted to, because we're not modded though, because Epic Games. Uh, still doesn't work with mods for Arc 1.0. I can't use simple spawners. And simple spawners would have made my life so much easier on the server. It, it's ridiculous how much easier it would have been. Alright. So this is the other area of this server that terrifies me and it may or may not work today but we're going to see what we can do about it so historically this has been one of the scariest places in all Ragnarok Because it is generally filled to the brim, to the very brim, with certain dinos. And those are the spiders and the bats. Notice Turtle Club, there are no spiders, there are no bats. They just aren't here.
Okay, I was unaware that Ark had giant writable burbs. Oh, hey, Octo or Tiggy, how's it going? They they have writable burbs. Um, they've got writable cats. They've got writable octopuses. They they have. There's giant writable just about everything on this Octo. They have. They even have gone past the the dinosaur phase and moved on to other things. Um, and Turtle Club Octo Tiggy is one of the streamers I follow. It's actually a real life friend, one of the people that actually kind of helped me in Dig Rat Meat. They're not a family friendly channel, so if you're looking for family friendly content, possibly not the best place to look. But they are in the New Zealand time zone, so if you're looking for some fun content, they do stream, they also do uploads. Definitely worth checking out. 100% uh, enjoy it anytime, anytime I can actually catch their stuff. And usually I'm asleep, but occasionally I get to cool, see some cool stuff when I see them live. But yeah, I hope your day is going good. So far we are striking out on our searches. Yeah. Octo, of course, is the gentleman octopus, and Tiggy, of course, is the. Uh, you can ride an octopus. What a world we live in. Yes. Um, they're. Well, okay. Apologies, Octo. Gentleman octopus, they are not actual octopi, they are squid. Um, which, if we're talking about real prehistoric stuff, though. Genetically, it probably all goes back to the same giant um, dinosaur. But they are giant Cthulhu-esque dinos that are deep in the oceans in this game. And pretty amazing. Uh, they, they actually use um, wrestling moves, mostly. <laughs> How they grapple dinos and whatnot. Alright, this is... Ooh, glider suit and and an artifact we'll take that oh, there's another tappy but yeah the the castle man I'm about to do some stupid stuff turtle club and we know we know we know the dumb that we're about to do Get some of that. Get some of that. All right. So, oh, we already have a sleeping bag. Awesome. Yeah, so we're going to make us a torch. And we're going to do that with grabbing some stone out of here. Crafting that. That castle has really just driven me a little unfortunate. And it's been a very long time since we've done one of our trademarked dumb things in this game. So I think we're about due. I really do think we're about due. So what we're going to do is that thing we do, right? It does back a do. Uh, the number, the variation on it is... There's a lot. I wouldn't go as far as to say there is a, a Pokemon level of things to tame and acquire. But I would say that it is very close to a Pokemon level of things to tame and acquire. Alright, so I keep wanting to hit that button even though it's not the right button. Alright, so let's go ahead and grab our fungal wood and our thatch. We're going to make some foundations. How many can we make? We can make 10. We probably only need like two. And then walls. We're making two, we need eight, 10, 11.
and then if we go door we personally like the double door and then ceiling we'll need two of those and then sloped or ramp do we not have a stone ramp is there not a stone ramp we just we we just don't have a stone ramp so Okay. Stairs, maybe? Stone stairs, that's what we're looking for. Okay. Wait, not stain, stair. And do we, what are we missing? We're missing stone, okay. Well, hmm. And we don't have enough something for the storage box. Oh, fiber. We don't have enough fiber for a storage box. Okay. Dun dun. Dun dun. Get the fiber. Not wood. Fiber. Arguably, if you eat one, you would be getting the other. Alright. Uh, so, back up here. So yeah, we are going to do something dumb, but, and that's, I say this as, as great as I can, but we're not going to be so dumb. Oh, no, 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 All right. Octo Tiggy would probably like Ark, maybe. Uh, you know, I don't know. Um, Octo and Tiggy, they, they do a lot of cool stuff. Um, I, I would... I would think that it really would depend on a, a few things. Like Tiggy and Digrat have a very they have some some similarities to their to some of their playstyles. Um so maybe But I do have to say, I know they, they've been playing some, um, um, well, they've, they've played a lot of Animal Crossing. They've played a lot of um, Final Fantasy. Okay, first off, how dangerous is this? Not that dangerous. Okay, good. Good. And can I get over here? Yes, I can. But they have a lot going on in their life, too. So it's it's just play all the games sounds so amazing. And then when you realize you don't have enough time to play half the games, let alone all of them, it just kind of loses a lot of its appeal, sadly. All right, so we're going to... Do that. We are going to put this away, this away, grab that. We're going to put all of that away. So now we're basically Mr. Madsen with the spoken stuff. So there is a forever a lack of time. Oh gosh, oh gosh. You, you are uh, spot on with that. You are spot on for that. That that is somewhere amongst all of that is a Doctor Who quote. I am absolutely certain. Um, on the one hand, on the other hand, uh, it slightly saddens me that it's probably a Clara Oswin Oswald quote that it comes down to. And I was, I was in the camp that. I thought she was a way cooler character before she became a companion. So, we'll just say it like that. <laughs> Alright. 
So now we dump all of that in there. Anything that we feel like we could live without, we take out. Like, and I, I don't really like myself for feeling that way about a Doctor Who companion character, but unfortunately, it's just the way it was. Right, let's take these out and put them on, actually. All right, and outside of killing of the cute dinos, Digret seemed like, yeah, Digret really enjoyed Ark um, for the most part. The one thing that Digret doesn't like with games like this is. She needs to feel like when she's done, she has something more than just simply internet points. And Ark, at one point, it becomes very solved. Souffle Clara over Endless Clara, as it were. Yes, Souffle Clara was amazing. Um, I, I enjoyed Souffle Clara. I, I liked the puzzle, and I feel like... At some point, and I don't know when that was, but at some point the puzzle was more than solved. It was like ham-fistedly taken care of. Um, hold the phone. One of the other things I need out of here is that torch I built. Okay. Let's grab some of our jerky. Put that hide back. All right, that's there, that's there, that's there, that's there, that's that, that's that. Oh, this needs to go in there too, so we'll grab that and put that there. All right, so we have our poking stick, just like Mr. Madsen from Little Gamers. Another non-family friendly thing that's amazing if you ever have a chance to look it up. Okay. So, we're now free to mostly explore the castle at this point without fear of death because when we die we have our little box over there we have our little fallback box and if we find the dinosaur that calls this place its home we're probably dead we're probably dead and I, I the thing with the Clara storyline too, um, Octo is, it it was, it had such good promise. I get where they were going with it. There were so many better ways to go about doing what they tried to do, though. Yes, yes, hundred uh, percent. The the mods. Um, do so much with Ark. It is it is quite silly what all the mods add to Ark. Hello. I promise you guys, if you're here, I'm not a bill collector. Just a regular old castle inspector. I'm here to inspect your castle.
right. The hype for this castle is indeed not real. <laughs> there is... Oh, ouch. There is some really, really terrifying things going on in this castle. We just got to get to them. And that's the... If they're here. If they're here. That's the problem. Is I've... I've uh, I've done some tricksy uh, I and I stuff with the the text configs, and I I know that they're here somewhere. It's just a question of finding them. Severe lack of giant spiders. Oh, the giant spiders we've removed actually. We've replaced them with something far scarier. If they're only here, though. And that is indeed the six million dollar question. So we're still Castle of the Swamp. So as long as we're in Castle of the Swamp, what we're looking for can spawn. And the castle's always been picky when you mess with the spawns. It has. It has. Um, and I happen to know... I happen to know that they do work. It's just a question of getting to where they're at. But what's... So, one of the things that makes the castle so silly... Is, in fact, that... There's not that many spawners in the castle. There really isn't. Uh, in fact, I believe, according to the design files, there's only two spawners... And so the reason why there's so many spiders and bats in the castle is because Wildcard cranked these spawns up. So what you're normally seeing in the castle is actually forced over spawn. So now we're in the Frasia Plains, so we're definitely outside of the area we wanted to be. Alright, so we're going to have to go deeper into the castle, probably. Let's go... We're going to go around the other way. Just to be... Um... I would normally say just to be on the safe side, but what we're doing has nothing safe to it. Now that is that is not in the spawn zone, so at least there's that. I don't need to go down in the swamp, so I shouldn't need to go down the swamps for these things to spawn. Okay, um footballs. Far less scary when we're not playing Brutal Arc. <laughs> Brutal Arc, these things are terrifying. Uh, the dungeon's actually considered an instanced area, which is interesting with the way it handles itself. Um, and it doesn't actually it doesn't actually affect it, so there's that. Castle Swamp. All right, so we've we fully investigated the outside, and we've not gotten any special spawns, so that's good. Like two or three times I tested this, it was all outside. So, all right, so now.
that we've explored all the outside courtyard stuff there and there. We are now ready to go downstairs and possibly get all sorts of killed. And there's a chance that they spawned here too. So nothing there, we know we, well, actually, I don't know for a fact, because I think I fell, so it took the actual staircase. Alright, so not on the staircase. Not on that staircase, let me say it that way. Don't forget to eat before you go down. Um, you know, I did forget to eat before I went down. Let's uh, eat a little bit. All right. So we're still technically in the castle of swamps. Turtle this is slightly frustrating. And at the same time, a little, little unnerving. I mean, when you're expecting, when you're expecting the Chainsaw Massacre and you don't get it, <laughs> you kind of get really weirded out. Um, they won't spawn here because at this point once we go down in there we're no longer in the castle at least I don't think so I don't want to increase their spawn rate too much because they're definitely horrifying. Especially if you're not ready for them, but I think I'm going to have to up their spawns. I think I'm going to have to up their spawns, Turtle Club, because I've, I've, I've found them on days off when we're not streaming. They've, they've definitely been here. It may be just because there's just not been enough time since the server reset. I know McIndoo, you don't normally go in here and, and like most people avoid the castle. Like if if they are if they are asked very politely at spear point to go into the castle or, or jump off of a, a mountain, they normally will jump off the mountain. Um so most people avoid it heavily but if you've not and you've actually seen the things that spawn in here that that would at least be a good sign for me but you've only been in there once a long time ago okay
Let's say that I'm a little bit bummed about the fact they're not spawning. It would be a, a minor understatement. But... I'm going to fix that. I shall be course correcting that. And it, it'll be a very strong course correction. We will, we, we will see the, the terrifying thing next week. Turtle Club. Internet willing, we will see it. I guess technically we didn't check all of the parapets out here, right? But they're not there. Yes, yes. Um, we did skip an hour. We are now an hour ahead. Um, funny story about that. Uh, Digret reminded me about two hours before the skip happened. So I went from having like normal time to losing an hour while being awake, which is always a weird feeling. Alright, well, that was very anticlimactic, Turtle Club. I am very sorry about all that. Let's go and pick this up. Let's uh, grab all these things. Kind of want to do the Boy Scout thing always, right? And if you do a few things to the area, always try to always try to pick up after yourself. If you have a fob down, you know, um, pick it back up. If unless there's a very usable public kind of taming pen um, and then you can leave them there alright and where is our pokeball Suddenly, Argent. Okay. Well, that is definitely unfortunate. Well, so, while we're here, we still got, um, like 20 minutes left. You found it interesting. You didn't make it to the bottom. I've been, um, I've been there a couple times. There's a, there's a dungeon that that links into and there's an entrance into the dungeon through there and it's considered the safer option to go through the waterway and that's how Digrat and I kind of went after it was that way so that, that's mainly the reason why I'm familiar with it all right um, in beta mode we showed off what we had accomplished here for beavers so we won't go over that so many a completely peaceful castle exploration sim on the back of a giant eagle <laughs> oh Octo it, it is it is so much more than that um, it's it's a less creative version of Minecraft with dinosaurs and other giant kaiju like monsters and stuff uh, but what I do want to do is since we have some time I was really hoping to see some of the crazier dinos we have on here but all right uh, it helps if I actually go the right direction been through the dungeon came out the swamp yeah, there's... Oh, yeah, there, there's another entrance over there at the swamp. I forgot about that one. I always forget about the swamp one. I, I Mainly because it's always guarded by crocodiles. So, let's... Um, let's take all this stone stuff and put it on the Argent. We can't give it the... That... All right. All right. 
so this should get us access into what Digger and I call Spino Canyon. So there's a Tyrannosaurus Rex. All right, so. This leads to the water. Just kind of follow this natural path. Oh, we're getting some kickback that's never good. Please, internet, don't drop on me. Not while I'm in the middle of a dangerous area. Three entrances, actually. Yeah, there's the there's the swamp entrance, there's the castle entrance, and then there's the mountainside entrance. All right. So there's the Carno. All right, so down here is where we've added a lot more of the insanity craziness. So the reason why I dig right and I call it Spino Canyon is because there are Spinos. 1.40 a.m., work later today. All right. All good. Thank you, Octo, for swapping in. Really appreciate it, man. Really appreciate it. Glad you and Tiggy are good after all the craziness that went over in your neck of the woods a, a while back. So there's an X Spino for starters. Fighting everything. And there are there are so many more Spinos here than what normally you would see. Uh, so that's the first thing that we've done to remodel this area. Uh, we don't have the proper food to feed them, so we're not going to try to take one home. And, and uh, yeah, have a good one, Octo. Uh, and, man, I always shout out the people that I know are, are deserving of it. Uh, speaking of shout outs, also Turtle Club, T Mac Music, musician, performer on Twitch, has their stuff published in a myriad of places. Um, my brain is wrong and blank on all of them, but I do know that. They're, they have material on Spotify or, or did. I, th I know that there are some complications with that. Um, definitely worth checking out. When they go live, you can see them on Turtle Television. Oh, 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 oh. Speaking of things that are... Here we go. So in Spino Canyon, because Spinos were not enough... Uh, we've added a number of things. The Carquinos being one of them. And Turtle Club, these things are brutal. Uh, they do the jumping thing. They do really insane stuff. You notice that there are more Spinos. Yes, there are more Spinos because there are three variations of Spinos. Um, there are the X Spinos, there are the Aberrant Spinos, and there are the Normal Spinos. And they don't count each other for uh, bonded pairs. So that's good to know. If you see a male Spino, there is a very good chance that if you see a female Spino nearby, they're not going to group buff each other. Which is kind of funny because it both makes them um, easier to tame and harder to tame. Same thing for the Baryonyxes that are out here. Uh, having issues with artwork for the rest of your songs. Oh, that's unfortunate, man. Um, that's that's tough. You know, that's one thing that creative people I've noticed collectively as a group. We run into some issues. Um, we're really creative in one vein of art, like say musicality, um, writing, drawing, sculpting. But we often don't have that same level of, and I hate to say it this way, we don't usually have that same level of talent toward the other things. But what we do is we have, and what we do have is that same, um, that same level of, what's the, what's the word for it? We have that same level of need of perfection, of uh, standard that we hold ourselves to. 
And so, like, in your ch your area, right, you're, you're a musician, and you do really great stuff. And you also, you know, compose and play, and and that, that talent is not to be looked upon lightly at all. Um, but maybe when you put, a, you know, paintbrush to, to canvas or mouse to mouse pad, um, it doesn't seem to add up the same way. However, because you're talented in one form of art, many artists tend to look at themselves and go, man, this is so not good. And I think um, that's, that's a big problem I have at times. I, you know, I do story writing. Um, I do RPG writing and, and plot hooks um, when I'm not doing this. Character development, world building and all that. And if I try to draw or I try to make a tune or uh, any of that, I just look at it and go, my gosh, this is, this is, it's not good. And it's not that it's not good, right? Let's, let's get that out of the way. You know, if you can draw a stick person, you're doing better than people that don't draw stick people. And in fact, there's actually a really interesting comic on the internet called, um, Order of the Stick, Oots, also known in, in some places as the Giant and Playground comic. And it's completely done by uh, stick figures, as far as the characters go. Look at all this. Spinos, as far as the eye can see. More Spinos. Carquinos. And that's a, that's a very deep pad of water there, Total Club. That is not shallow water. I mean, this Carquino is going to attack us, for starter, um, or it's going to come out of the water in some stretch of the imagination. It's, I think it's right over here, maybe? But look at that. Look at the Carquino. It's under the water. Whatever it's killing is not having a good day. Um, these things are huge, though. But yeah, and that's, you know, great story writer. The stuff that they've written for Order of the Stick is in, it's just in, immaculate for world building. They took your unpredictable flight one because it was a photo. Oh, wow. Okay. You might just have to go out taking random photos for the rest. You know, that's, that's unfortunate, you know, um... I guess it's part of the gig, though, right? That is something else, too. There, you know, there's services out there that you can find some graphic artists that you might be able to commission artwork for. Um, I've kind of looked into some of those for some of the stuff that we do here. Yeah, Total Club, that's Spino Canyon. It's it's dangerous we do have to go in and do some stuff in it sometime we do need to make our way back to our base as well man I was really hoping we'd come up with some really uh, some tames today be yeah, out taking random photos those work um, you know, I'm just thinking, you know, just right off, right? Some of the some of the most interesting music that I listened to way back in the day was from an artist named Fatboy Slim. And I I enjoy that style of music. I know very little about the artist. But I will say that their music videos, early on especially, uh very low budget. <laughs> very low budget. And it was just them basically playing around with a camera and and seeing what worked and just putting music to mood. So random photos work. Yeah, love their music. Yeah, yeah. Um, he does really good work. He does really good work. Let's just park here for just a second. But yeah, you know, art is... That's the other thing about art, though, right? It's just so... Um, 
it's so personal you know the the, the phone at the end answer right is it's subjective but the reason why it's subjective is it's personal art usually is one of those things that evokes experiences out of people it evokes memories out of people it evokes um, you know uh, just a, a primal response in some cases and not everybody's had the same life as everybody else right so some music that actually is very evocative for some people is going to just be a dud for others and, and same thing for for picturesque scenery and beauty Minecraft with a shader or arc either of those would be kind of cool um oh you know it would be kind of neat T-Mac uh, building on that idea right is maybe going with like a low res night sky on like one side of the image and it's sort of blending into a high-res night sky at the end of it. Same night sky, but just kind of um, rainbowing it. Shadow! Lurk Squad King Supreme. Thank you for popping in today, sir. Oh, whoa, whoa. that was some pretty good timing, too. Visual dodo offering for the Supreme Lurker. How about that timing? Alright, we'll just take off. Let those endangered species stay endangered. But yeah, that kind of music, you know, I mean, you just gotta... You just gotta kind of feel it out sometimes with what works. And especially with the the services that you're presenting your music to, T Mac, that I didn't stop and think about that until just like right now. And apologies for that. I'm, I'm not an expert at everything. I'm far from that. Um, but you know, it dawned on me that if people are looking for your music, the the song cover art is going to possibly be the factor that decides whether or not they they play the song. All praise the dodo, yes. I don't know what level this thing is, but it is taking a couple hits to kill. That's fine. Did I level up? I leveled up. Oh my gosh, that happens so rarely these days. Uh melee damage. What did I learn? Anything? At level 122. I should have learned another tech item, but it didn't say that I learned anything in the tech. I'm wondering... No, I know my I and I codes are working. That's why you went through most of your YouTube thumbnails. You know, that's not a bad... That's, that's a pretty smart tactic, man. It really is. Do, 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 fly to the Valkyrie, fly to the Valkyrie, Argentavia swings. Of course, Turtle Club, we are on the Epic Rag with Mag server that is Epic Games cross platform compatible. And if you notice the little logo on the upper left hand corner, that is Arc Servers IO, who provides the server for us one of our sponsors links to server options if you'd like to get your own seeing what we have made capable with this one uh, this is mod free you can put mods on it if you're not playing with epic games alright um, you know what there's a very strong chance this is going to all 
be one of the worst spur of the moment decisions I have ever made. But there's an equal chance that it won't. I don't know if we shot the Diplo or if we got the, the Rex. If this Diplo kills this Rex, I'm going to laugh. If anyone is familiar, you can have one of Melrex's, you have two. Oh, that's okay. That could do. It's just... I have... Oh, alright. Okay. Okay. Alright, we're running low on... We're running low on intelligence right now. It's, uh... Oh, oh, oh. Rex on the run. Rex on the run. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for the GG there. Look at this. Look at this poor Diplo. It's still aggroed on the on the racks. So this could have possibly killed the racks. It really could have. Um, it's just hilarious when you realize that a, a Diplo actually does zero damage. A Diplodocus does not hurt a dinosaur at all. It doesn't. What a Diplo does is they are the one of the most playful dinosaurs in all of Ark. They just go up to them and basically hug them. Basically. Not specifically, but, but, but basically. And what I mean by that is they come up to them and they just nudge them. They push on them and push on them and push on them. And that was pushing that Rex specifically to where it was going in the water. It wasn't going to be able to fight back, possibly. Alright, hello guys. There is a chance that you guys eventually would find they are the biggest f fast runner. Oh, Diplos? Diplos are, are more than that. Um, Diplos are not just fun to ride. The other thing that is not as known about Diplos is they are actually on, on most dinosaurs that have an aggro table. Diplos don't appear on the aggro table. Um, a very long time ago, we had a, a video about the floor being uh, snakes in our Ark Survival Evolved, uh, in our Mag vs. Wild series, where we crashed a server due to overspawn for the, the center map. And that particular um, series was fun. But it just started slowing down, and we were on a Diplo because it was... I, oh, oh, come on. Don't, 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 don't crash me. Don't crash me. Don't crash me. 
Oh, look at this, guys. So this right here is uh, Pelic. He is one of the staff members for ArcServers.io, and this is their base. Look at look at this insanity here. Built right into the side of the mountain. Oh, that that is some coloration. There is the the horrifying Dimorphodon. Um, just danger that that is. That is that is a that is a dino color right there is what that is. Look at that. Love seeing other people's base designs when I fly by them because I'm like, what's that? So when you get a lag spike like that, that means one of two things. You're either in an overspawn area or you found somebody else's base that has a lot of really awesome dinos on it. And that's what we found there. Now, of course, as we come this direction, we're about to find some overspawn. And that's completely because of the, the otter population. But yeah, there's there there's some uh, there's some stuff going on with uh, the Diplo. Uh, it doesn't aggro, except for like three dinos. I think there's a total of three dinosaurs that actually will aggro on them, and they're the maybe a couple extra. Maybe maybe three is putting it a little too low. But uh, outside of the yeah, this right here causes a lot of lag for some people um, because of everything that's on Digred Island. And Turtle Club, this is not even the the high level of otters. Oh, that center episode was amazing. That center episode was amazing. But you'd get off the Diplo and all of a sudden all, all the things on top would spawn and just aggro and just roar. Okay, alright, so... F. We are good. We're going to grab all of that. We're going to put some food on you. Alright. Total Club, we unfortunately didn't quite accomplish what we wanted to accomplish. We did tame a dino. It wasn't an X variant. We tried. It just wasn't in the cards today. That happens sometimes. We uh, we did get a, a considerable amount of other stuff, though. What can we put in this? Just meat. Good. But we did get a uh, an artifact and a pedestal, so let's let's put our pedestal down, and we can start our artifact collection. Where is our artifact at? There it is. Look at it glow. You lost audio. That's odd. OBS still says we have audio coming in. Testing snap. Uh, yeah, if it's if it's gone, I'm not sure why it's gone. Odd. Let's uh, let's let's put all the food stuff that we need to put away in the in the put away bin, and put away put away. That's not food. Either is that. That's the fabricator. You hear me fine? Okay. It's just YouTube being YouTube, unfortunately sad all right put away put away put away inside the bin all right and that will be where we call it good today guys all right so we got our argent we got our food we're gonna make sure that we got our cooked food uh, boom We'll turn that off and we'll just let that other food stay in there just in case. But Turtle Club, thank you all for coming in and saying hi to today. It, it was man, a lot of people came in to say hi. We had Sally who was here for only so much time for the gaming. Uh, we talked about the restaurant experience, T Mac music, Shadow, our three of our sponsors showing up today. Thank you guys. What you guys do for this channel, uh, with your with your giving. 
um, financially is is amazing, and your time as well. Um, McAdoo, Octo Tiggy, great channel. Check their content out if you're okay with non family friendly stuff. Um, and T Mac Music, great musician. Check their content out as well. T Mac Music does show up in Turtle Television. Octo Tiggy, um, they're not a member on our Discord, so when they go live, it doesn't show up. And uh, it's just a, a way that we have it all set up. Uh, so definitely go look at their channel as well. But guys, thank you for coming in. I'm going to go to bed. Um, I have lost an hour in my day, so I should be going to sleep right now because of the way time works. Because of the way reality works, I'll probably be wired for the next half hour or so. But there's things that I probably need to do because of the hour I lost, right? But guys, I'm going to have myself a good night. You all have a good breakfast, good lunch, good dinner. Uh, a good night as well, in case, you know, Octo Tiki, almost 2 a.m. when they when they had the bounce. Um, whatever you do, Turtle Club, thank you for watching. Stay safe, wash your hands, and have a good one. Take care, guys.